Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Ben, and today for Book Trek 2021, we are looking at Picard, The Last Best Hope by Yuna McCormack. So, once again, I am doing a next gen video in October, although I read this in September, uh, just because I'm late with videos. But I am on a five-month mission with some other great booktubers uh, where we are exploring Star Trek fiction uh, from August to December, and we are following Star Trek iterations uh, from Next Gen up until Enterprise. Uh, so we looked at, um, sorry, from original series up until Enterprise. We looked at the original series in uh, August. We looked at Next Gen in September. Um, and October is DS9. Uh, now, this is technically Picard, right, uh, the newer series, um, not strictly Next Gen, but obviously related to Next Gen, and I chose this especially because this book in particular bridges the gap between the Next Generation series and the movies, all right, from Nemesis, uh, post-Nemesis, up until, uh, the precursor to Picard, uh, so I have not watched Picard yet, um, Star Trek is something that uh, me, my wife and I um, share a love of. Uh, so we watch each episode and each movie, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, together. Um, now, we don't binge watch things <laughs> daily. We see a few episodes a week. Uh, but we have gone from original series, Next Gen, uh, DS9, Voyager, Enterprise. Uh, of course, we've watched the movies and the Kelvin Timeline movies. Um, and we are currently halfway through uh, Discovery. When we finish watching all the Discovery episodes that are available, then we'll go on to watch Picard. Um, and of course, Lower Decks and things like that. So um, I read this without seeing Picard. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to read it is because I wanted to get through this book before I, read, uh, before I watched the series. And from what I understand of the series, uh, we find... Uh, Card as an older, sort of embittered man, uh, and somebody who has left, he resigned from Starfleet. So this book lets us know why. Um, how do you get uh, Picard, which is probably one of the most inspirational uh, and one of the most corely Starfleet captains, um, believes so wholeheartedly in what Starfleet and the Federation are about. Uh, one of the most morally, you know, uh, morally clear and inspiring captains. What would cause him to give up, give up his position, right? Um, so, Yuna McCormack gives us a very, a very mature look at the Star Trek world. Um, and I don't just mean that because in the Kurtzman era, uh, we have profanity <laughs> um, in Star Trek. And there is some profanity in here. But this is not a rollicking space adventure at all. Uh, the kind of thing that you would often expect out of Star Trek. This is much more about politics and about bureaucracy and about the corruption uh, that those sorts of things can bring um, to what would otherwise be something inspiring and hopeful. And so much of this book is about um, having your ideals uh, fall short, um, having them let you down. Uh, Picard um, is persuaded to give up command of the Enterprise in order to become an admiral and lead a rescue fleet, um, a vast rescue fleet to help out the Romulan Empire. Uh, as we saw in the first um, Abrams Star Trek movie, uh, the son, uh, for Romulans, um, goes supernova. And we find out in this that it is a huge supernova. It destroys, or it's going to, and it doesn't, doesn't, uh, explode in this book. Uh, but it is projected to destroy many, many worlds in the Romulan Star Empire. And there are hints within this that, that, Supernova is not entirely a natural cause, that it is much bigger than it should be, uh, as far as the science is concerned. So, and there are hints in here that the Romulan Star Empire, those are who are at the top, and also maybe some people in Federation, 
are aware of this, uh, that maybe there is something much more artificial going on, but they're not saying anything. And um, Picard takes on this mantle, this role, to try and rescue as many people from the Romulan Empire as possible. And Romulan Empire is mostly not very cooperative. Uh, they are highly suspicious of everything that he's doing. They are often putting, uh, you know, speed bumps in his way. They are not entirely truthful, of course, with what is going on. And he is being frustrated quite often. And he has to make some very difficult decisions as to, uh, you know, basically weigh weigh the cost of lives um, to save many uh, by allowing some others to die. And in the eyes of some people who follow him uh, and who look up to him for inspiration, they see that maybe as a moral failure or at least a failure of command and his position. So he is very much aware that he is an inspirational character, an inspirational person in this. Um, and he can't always live up to that. And just like he is that way for some individuals, Starfleet is for him, right? And the Federation, he holds them in very high regard and he is constantly put in a position where he is promising people, no, the, the Federation will not fail, fail you. You know, or Starfleet, you know, will certainly do the right thing. And as time goes on, he finds that that is not true. Uh, that bureaucracy is eroding Starfleet's values politics is. A lot of what we end up seeing, we can kind of parallel with our own time period. And uh, people either misusing science for their own ends, or questioning science uh, when the data is clearly there. We can see things like that with, uh, with climate change or, you know, w with other things that have the science clearly backing it. Uh, but for political reasons, because it is politically or economically inconvenient, people will downplay those or they will throw suspicion on them uh for political gain uh we see that with a certain um certain counselor uh not like a deanna troy counselor i mean somebody who was on a council um who is a little bit i don't want to say palin sarah palin-esque but it's not quite that i mean she's an intelligent woman she's an engineer but she does come from a more of a backwater colony and there is this kind of sense that you know uh, well, the, the the main founding planets of the Federation, they always kind of get the best of the things. And what about us who are out kind of in like uh, the heartland? <laughs> you know, it's like a small town USA equivalent that they're almost more genuine. They're more pure, maybe, than those big city folk who live on the coast. Uh, we see a little bit of that. Now, to, you know, McCormack's uh, credit, I believe, um it does not seem like she is just transplanting things from our own, especially American political experience and just throwing them into Star Trek. It totally fits within this world. And there is not, it does not feel like you were just, you know, uh, coddling things from other, you know, kind of more of a Trumpian world um, into this, but you can kind of see the, you know, I, I think certainly a lot of, uh, a lot of people of certain political persuasions, uh, maybe no matter what side you're on at this point, uh, lost a lot of hope. I right, got the last best hope. This is uh, from a speech from, uh, I think it was the second inaugural, maybe, from uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, it could be wrong about exactly where, which Lincoln speech that comes from, but I think it's that. Um, we lost a lot of faith in our political process. <laughs> uh, in, you know, more suspicion towards our fellow countrymen and the choices they would make and how they would vote. Uh, you know, it, this, this does reflect that more embittered time, uh, that more lackluster, um, a darker way, you know, a, a darker vision. Uh, so Picard, we see him begin to lose his faith, uh, his hope in Starfleet itself and what they're asking him to do and also what they are prepared to help him with. Um, you know, Picard is somebody who stays Picard throughout this whole thing, uh, but you can see, in I think a fairly convincing way, why he would resign from Starfleet and no longer have trust and hope in them. Um, it's just, it, she does do an interesting thing in this as well, McCormack does. Uh, you know, it's called The Last Best Hope, but the sections of the book 
go in the reverse order. They go from hope to best to last. Uh, so we see this, you know, this last best hope um, failing uh, in this. Again, that's without spoilers. This is a setup to Picard. <laughs> so I knew going into this that this would be something, you know, of a downer of a read. <laughs> and it certainly is. Um, but it is, again, a much more mature look, I think, uh, at the Star Trek universe. I don't mean to imply that Star Trek universe fiction, uh, as is written, is childish. Um, but it is often much more adventurous and, you know, hopeful and everything else. And this is certainly not that. Uh, this is much more about uh, political maneuverings and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, people dealing with um, their their ideals uh, you know, becoming compromised. Um, so I would actually recommend this. I thought this was quite good. Uh, Una McCramack, I think, did a very good job. I know that she has been instrumental in a lot of the Kurtzman universe, which might embitter her, maybe, <laughs> to some people. Uh, if I'm, I could be incorrect, but I'm pretty sure that um, Strange New Worlds, uh, the newer Trek series that's going to be coming out um, about Christopher Pike's um, tenure on the Enterprise, uh, his second in command, number one, um, a woman who didn't have a name, uh, when she was introduced in the pilot episode of the original series, uh, has been shown to be her real name being Yuna, or Una, I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce it, I think it's Yuna, uh, and from what I understand, she's named after this author. Um, so, anyway, that is, those are my thoughts for uh for Picard the last best hope uh you know another installment of Book Trek 2021 all right anyway thank you booktube